I'm going to explain how to work centralized with Cloud Edition, but still using branching and merging. One of the things many people think, especially since uh, Git is around, is that uh, you need to be distributed to have good branching and merging, but that's not necessarily true. With Plastic SEM, you can have excellent branching and merging, you can create as many branches as you want and then perform super good merges while you're working centralized to a central repo that can be, you know, hosted in Plastic Cloud Edition or it can be on your on-premise server if you're using Team Edition or Enterprise. So what I'm going to explain is an example of uh, a small team working together using branching and merging in Cloud Edition. Here is a team, three developers on three different operating systems. Let's start by labeling an existing chain set on a repository that I already created before. So it's very simple, right click on a chain set and then enter the label name. I'm using BL for baseline and then just a comment and we're done. And you'll see the rendering in the branch explorer. Let's see how a developer joins the project. She just logs in to Cloud Edition, decides to join the organization, then starts from there, and then goes to the last option, selects an existing repo, the Quake repo, and will create a workspace for it. Let's see how start working on a branch. So the first thing she's going to do is to go to the branch explorer and her home, the, the house icon is actually on the, on the beginning of the branch because she didn't update. So what she's going to do is to basically create a branch starting from the from the head of the branch and we'll switch to it. It will trigger an update. So the entire content will be downloaded to, to her disk and now she's ready. So the next thing is she will go to the Workspace Explorer, find the file she wants to modify and just go there, open it in, in an editor and make a modification. Normally you'll be doing all these changes from an IDE or something like that, but just to stress the importance of the operations in Plastic, I'm just focusing on a simple editor. So she just made a few changes, go to pending changes, and now she can diff the change with a built-in diff. That's one of the key things in Plastic. So she now centers a comment and click on checking, and she's done with the first change. Now there are no more pending changes and there is a new branch created and a new chain set on it and she's ready to continue. So the next thing she's going to do is to do something a little bit more interesting. She's going to move the same method she modified before down in the file. And then I'm going to show you something pretty interesting in Plastic, which is the semantic diff that comes built in. You go to pending changes, click on the semantic diff, and then you see how this method in c -chart was actually moved down and how the diff tool knows about it because you're actually seeing how there's a line showing you the method was actually moved. That's pretty cool and that's one of the things we really love of or built in diff. Now she's going to check in next time. Now she's done with the change. And then she's going to go to branch explorer to actually see how what, what happened and she can also diff her change from there. So you see the diff chain set window, you can see the files being modified, the diff and so on. You can also diff the entire branch if, if needed, as you can see here. That's another very handy tool in Plastic SEM to understand changes on a full branch level. Let's now follow Mike as he joins the project from Windows. The first thing he's going to do is just to enter his credentials, something you've seen before a few times. We'll join the default organization, launch Plastic SEM. We'll go to the last tab and actually select an existing repository to work directly connected to it. So it's going to work in central fashion. Next thing, Mike is going to create a branch and work on it. So in his branch explorer that is connected to the central repo on the cloud, he's just seeing PAM changes, the PAM branch and all the changes. He sees uh, who's the owner. He can go and diff one of the chain set very easily with a built-in chain set diff. And he can also even go and diff the entire branch. No problem there, right? And then he sees the actually the semantic diff we showed before, this time from Windows. You see the difference in the GUI and also the other files that PAM modified. Next thing I'm going to do is to create a branch, well, Mike creates the branch, gives it a name, enters a comment, but notice something, I, I'm not going to select the switch workspace to, to this branch. 
My goes to the workspace explorer is still empty because he didn't switch to the branch and he was just the beginning of the main branch which was empty by default. So now he's going to right click on a branch and switch to it so you already get a understanding of how it works and then it will trigger the update and now when switching to the branch everything will be downloaded to his working copy to his workspace. Check this, I mean, when you create a branch, you have a check, which is switch workspace to this branch. Uh, normally it's set by default, but this time I didn't set it, right? So now you go back to the Explorer. Now you see that everything is there and I'm going to find, well, Mike is going to find a file that Pam modified to, to actually create a small merge conflict later on. So he's going to modify it, nothing fancy here. He's going to just use the notepad and he's going to find a, a different method and just add another comment. This is a, dummy file just use it for demos and so on so it's very simple and i just put a, a comment in there that is easy to track later on now he goes back to pending changes the new file modified is already there you can go and diff it and understand the change it was very very simple this time then he will just add a comment and click checking to actually submit the change directly to the cloud repository which is a nice thing in this way of working Let's now go back to Pam as she finishes her task. So she's already done, but she's going to do something very interesting. She's going to attach an attribute called status. She's actually creating the, the new attribute and, and giving it a, a value. So she's setting her, her branch as done this way. Now I'm going to merge the branches back to main. This time it's going to be from Mac. So I'll refresh my branch explorer to see the changes made by Pam and Mike. And now we can div the branches and the chain sets and well, you get an understanding and a feeling of how the GUI looks like from uh, Mac OS. You can div the entire branch. That's something very common in plastic. I can see the semantic div as you can see in here. And then, well, I'll just uh, go back and try to merge them back. Yeah, something I'm looking th there is the attribute that uh, Pam set on her branch. That's something that is not mandatory. It's actually optional but uh, we normally like to do it to mark branches as finished and you know get a better understanding of that so we are treating the first merge there are no conflicts as the mascot says this is just an easy merge there are no conflicts because of the the first merge you can go and and div the change if you want to understand what you are merging and then you can go and click on process all merges and uh, well before that let me show you the explain merge that's very nice to explain to the team how merges work it just gives you a preview of the contributor. So I just launched the merge and it's there. And okay, now I have uh, the file merge it. I can see the diffs if I hide the, the mascot. So here it goes with the diff and basically the first diff is completed. I, I can also see there's a merge link pending to be checked in. So we are ready with that. We just entered the checking comments as usual. And this time, together with files, we are also doing a checking of a merge, right? So if I now go back to the to the branch explorer and you see there's a merge link going on in there. So the first merge was pretty simple, but now I'm going to merge the second one. And this time, as the mascot says there, which is very handy, uh, there's a conflict. If I run the explanation, if I run the explanation, I can see the two contributors and the common ancestor, which are the ones that are going to participate in the merge. I can also see the other files. Remember the C files? They are not in conflict, so there's nothing to solve in there. They will be just copied back to main. So let's go now and, and solve this, this file. I have several options. I can just skip the merge and keep one of the contributors. That's not something very good unless you want to lose changes, but sometimes it's handy. And now we're going to process the merges and this time the merge was uh, automatic so just back to the pending changes and you see there were no conflicts because I, I basically didn't touch the same lines right so the merge actually proceed automatically and i can see the the change in the code that i moved and i can also see the the other change made by the the other developer by mike this time and now i can just finish my work commit the second merge check in the second merge and now i'm done go back to branch explorer and see how the two branches are merged and now I can finish my iteration with a new label and a new stable release. Of course now test should run even before setting the label and all that but I'm just focusing on the version control operations.